talk more about that, MSNBC political analyst Rick Tyler, the former spokesman for Ted Cruz's presidential campaign. Rick, great to see you. Hey, Kristen, how are you? I am great. Let's start with this point about immigration. As Halley was just saying, he does seem to be modifying his stance, now saying he only wants to deport the criminals. He sounds a lot like he's sort of reiterating the policy that's already in place under President Obama. So is this the type of thing that could help him with moderates, but ultimately hurt him with his base? What's your take? Yeah, I think that's exactly the problem. Look, not only is it exactly like the current administration, it was like the Bush administration, which he has compared it to. Remember, the law is that if you're in this country illegally, you should be deported. And so it's a question of enforcing the law. But it's not fundamentally different from what Marco Rubio was saying in the primary. It's not fundamentally mm -hmm. different from what John Kasich or Jeb Bush was saying in the primary. And yet Donald Trump uh, separated himself by having this policy that he was going to remove and actually seek out and find people who are here illegally and deport them, he said over and over again, they have to go. And now it turns out uh, either that all that wasn't true or he's been persuaded by his new leadership that he has to take this new position in order to attract moderates. But I, I think it's a very problematic. Well, okay, and following up on that, you look at the timing when you think about the fact that this could potentially be problematic. Does this pivot come too little too late? Does it make him look disingenuous effectively? It does. It's hard to, it makes him look disingenuous, but it's hard to judge whether his supporters, his supporters have this, um, it's, it's almost a strange notion that, well, you all, all you politicians do this, so he's just doing it too. And, and, and uh, all you politicians change your position, so our guy can change his position too. It means the adherence to him is um, sort of very strange, and you sort of get that with a celebrity type. Uh, but it would seem to me that this was his strongest two messages all during the campaign was his uh, very tough stance on immigration and his tough stance on trade. And if you look down into now the details and now his campaign's talking about getting into the weeds and, and you know, putting flesh on the, on the bones of what his policies really are, you find out that these policies are not fundamentally different from anyone else that he was running against. Well, and to your point, I mean, in order to win the White House, he actually has to expand his base of support. And to do that, he's been making this pitch to African-American voters. A lot of critics kind of looking at this pitch and saying, hey, wait a minute, this isn't so much directed at African-American voters as it is about bringing in some jittery, more moderate Republicans. Take a listen to what he had to say last night, and I want to get your reaction on the other side. What do you have to lose? I will straighten it out. I'll bring jobs back. We'll bring spirit back. We'll get rid of the crime. You'll be able to walk down the street without getting shot. Right now, you walk down the street, you get shot. Rick, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, yeah. Worth noting, he's delivering that message to a largely white audience. What do you make of his pitch and, and essentially saying, hey, if I'm elected, you're going to be able to walk down the street and not get shot? Well, I think it's, an, it's sort of an, an odd thing to say. Now, look. Um, disproportionately, African Americans uh, do attend uh, schools that aren't as good as other schools. They disproportionately live in crime-ridden neighborhoods. They disproportionately uh, are under the poverty level. So there's a nut of a message here that's true that uh, what have the Democrats done for you? You keep electing Democrats over and over again, especially in your in your urban cities, and yet things don't seem to change. But how, the question is, are they going to believe Donald Trump? And, and I, I don't think they will. I think Hillary will uh, hold on to the African-American vote. And I do think this is precisely about getting those Republicans who don't, they don't want to vote for someone who they feel might uh, be, have a, I, I even hesitate to use the word because I, I don't think Donald Trump is racist. Uh, but they want a little more comfort with Donald Trump as he's accepting of uh, minorities. And well, very, I think this quickly, gives them that Rick, comfort. Yeah, very quickly to that yeah. point, Republicans have struggled to win over African-American voters. Obviously, yes, the have. RNC Republicans have worked very hard over the past four years to try to change that. Could That's Donald right. Trump send this in the other direction? Is that one of your concerns? It, it absolutely is. But I think Donald Trump is a bit of an anomaly here. And that the shame here is, is Reince Priebus and others. And, and look, I've worked with a lot of the chairmen. And I think Reince actually is one of the chairmen who really understands uh, the, the uh, necessity of, of attracting the African-American vote, the Hispanic vote, um, the ever-growing uh, Asian vote. And he's worked really hard to do that. And Donald Trump has really uh, 
I think this is really a setback. I do think it can be recovered, um, but I do think it's sort of uh, odd that Reince would put so much effort into this only to have it really uh, hurt because of our, our nominee has not been able to attract African-American votes the way I think the Republican Party should. I think our, I think our message, a conservative message, is attractive to African-Americans uh, and Hispanics, except we have no one who seems to be able to articulate it that way. All right. Rick Tyler, as always, thanks so much. Really appreciate thanks, it.